Hey everybody, my name is Mark Latham and I'm pretty sure you noticed that NASA just last week launched their first commercial crewed spacecraft up to the International Space Station. I watched the entire event just completely enamored, stuck in my quarantine home, just drinking it all up. And every single time I saw something floating or drifting around, all I could think was, I want to go to there. But sadly, I am not a NASA astronaut. In order to fill my lust of space and explore the cosmos, I've had to teach myself a pretty complicated hobby, which is astrophotography. I've been able to explore some of those faraway things I would ever think I would lay my eyes on. My favorite part of space to explore using astrophotography is the Milky Way. And that's what this video is all about, is going through what you can discover for yourself without ever leaving Earth in the deep core of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy from edge to edge is about 106,000 light years across. When we see it in the night sky, like this photo that I took, the Milky Way looks like a band of stars that the ancients thought resembled a river of milk running through the sky. The Milky Way is only visible from a location far away from city lights, and as you can see, the orange light on the left is light pollution from Phoenix, and the blue light rising on the right is from the moon. Now zooming in here, this is another photo that I took just with a 50 millimeter lens and it reveals an ocean of stars and dust. Now this is looking towards the center bulge of the Milky Way galaxy. We actually can't see the bulge. It's completely obscured by dust and endless stars. The bulge itself is 25,000 light years deep into this picture. The Great Rift is only 3,000 light years away. It's made out of tons of different clouds of gas flowing around inside the plane of our Milky Way. It occupies occupies tons of different depths. You can actually see right in the center of the photo is the famous Dark Horse Nebula. Don't forget the Pipe Nebula that's just on the underside of the horse as well. Now we're going to zoom in some more to the bright glowing structures inside this picture. Those are nebulae. I've added the moon to this photo to show the apparent size in the night sky. Nebula are regions of radiation, gas, and dust that often house the birth of stars through the gravitational collapse of the nebula structure. Now, the three types of nebulae that we see in this picture are reflection, emission, and dark. A reflection nebula is actually a cloud that reflects starlight back towards us. And so we can see this blue fringe around the Trifid Nebula. It's blue because it's reflecting that bright blue color from that super hot mass of star close by. But when it comes to emission nebula, the pink stuff, you notice the big lagoon nebula up here, it is very similar to a reflection nebula, but only the light is so intense, it heats and charges the gas and dust to the point that it starts emitting its own color and radiation based on what elements are in the gas cloud. Hydrogen is that pinkish red color, and also you can get oxygen emitting a blue-green color. But my favorite of all of them is the dark nebula. You can see this flowing structure that blots out the stars behind it. Now, if we go even further, let's take a look at this one emission nebula that has this bubble structure to it. It's actually the result of a new stellar system being born inside the dark nebula. This particular nebula is 5,020 light years away. Young stars give off huge solar winds in the form of ultraviolet radiation, which pushes against the surrounding dust cloud, blowing open this bubble-like shape. The UV radiation is likely also superheating and charging the hydrogen in the background, which is what makes it glow red. The rest of the emission nebula in this photo is likely coming from the radiation produced by this one star here. Now, all of this is just to give you a perspective of depth. The Lagoon and Trifid Nebula, for example, are about 4,100 light years away, so closer than that bubble nebula. The light leaving these nebula has been traveling through the dark vacuum of space towards Earth for about the same amount of time that the Great Pyramids have existed. If you notice in the background the golden red hue to the stars, that can be attributed to the fact that when starlight passes through cosmic dust, it gets shifted in the red direction. That's the same thing that happens with the sunset. The dust in the atmosphere actually takes the blue out of the sunlight, making the sunset look red. So now that we have a better understanding of these nebula, let's zoom out to our Milky Way picture yet again. You may notice there's one spot in this picture of the Milky Way that's noticeably brighter than the rest of the image, and it's that bottom center area. We call that body's window. The significance behind this window was discovered right after World War II and astronomers used the window to peer the farthest they could into the galactic core using visible light. Now these clouds keep us from seeing all the way into the core of the galaxy, 
but infrared light passes right through these clouds. Using infrared light, we can actually see behind them and peer deeper into the galactic core. Sadly, the Earth's atmosphere blocks infrared light, so you need the Spitzer Space Telescope and a few others to see into the core of the Milky Way. James Webb Space Telescope coming up will use infrared light sensing as well. We can't take a look at the Milky Way without looking at Antares. Antares is a beautiful red giant. It's only about 604 light years away from Earth. It's 700 times the sun's diameter, which is large enough to engulf the orbit of Mars. And despite only being 12 million years old, the sun is 4.6 billion years old in comparison. It's expected to go supernova. Right next door to it in this picture is M4, a globular snowball cluster, 7,176 light years away. This is 10 times farther away than Antares is, but in the picture, they look right next door to each other. Globular clusters are gravitationally bound collections of some of the oldest stars belonging to our galaxy. These stars are about 90% the age of the universe. There's about 100 of these globular clusters orbiting the Milky Way galaxy, and most large galaxies have entire swarms of them. My favorite thing about globular clusters is that we don't even know how they formed. There's tons of theories out there, but to this date, we have really no idea how a globular cluster gets made. And to take this even deeper, if we take a look at NGC 6144, which is that other globular cluster just up to the right of Antares, this guy is 30,000 light years away which is still only one fourth the distance of the width of the Milky Way galaxy. But at that distance, it's actually farther away than the core of the galaxy is to Earth itself. But there is one thing that I tried incredibly hard to get a picture of. I've gone super deep. I've done hour and hour upon integration to pull light out of the Milky Way. This next picture is one of the most elusive things that so many people on the internet have never seen before. And if we zoom up and we look at it right there, you'll find the subscribe button. This next photo I didn't take. This is actually an illustrated map of the Milky Way. If you look, that black circle is the location of the sun. It shows that we're part of the Orion Spur that drifts off between multiple other arms of the Milky Way galaxy. You'll notice that that black circle is actually on the close edge of the Orion's arm itself. And then there's nothing between the Orion arm and the Sagittarius arm. Now this gap between the arms is about 4,000 light years across. I love imagining a time where humans are star hopping, looking for a new home, trying to get a grip in the cosmos. And they come across this massive, huge drop off. And it's just like that one scene. Whoa. Cool. Saved your life. Oh, you guys made me eat. But all jokes aside, imagine how huge our home is. The Milky Way galaxy is 106,000 light years from edge to edge. It's absolutely mind boggling to me. When you take a look at the big picture here, that yellow circle right where the sun is, that right there is the extent of the stars that you can see with your naked eyes. The second you start taking long exposures with the camera though, you open up a huge swath of the core of the Milky Way galaxy. But even then, there's so much more that we will never be able to see from the Earth. This is gonna be one of the focuses for this channel. I would love to teach you how to do wide field astrophotography and then deep field stuff if you really wanna get into it. At the end of the day though, none of this matters if you don't feel like you're becoming part of the cosmos yourself. You're not just a speck of dust on yet another speck of dust spinning around an average star. You are the universe discovering itself. Every single time I snap one of these photos and I see the Milky Way galaxy flowing in front of me, that's the Milky Way experiencing discovery and exploration. I cannot get enough of that analogy from Carl Sagan. Highly recommend you delve into every YouTube video there is about Carl Sagan. But if all you want to do is just like this one video, just wait, there's so much more to explore. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh, I totally forgot to mention it. All of these photos, except for the ones marked with NASA, I took myself. If you love these photos just as much as I do, feel free to go ahead and stop by my store. I have the link in the description. And also I just finished putting together my first Patreon and I would love to have that continuing support so I can make more exploration science videos just like this. Again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.